I am with uh, Grace Kinothea. She is a psychologist to help us in this discussion. Karusana Grace. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm good. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for, for having coming. me. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, we are talking about mental health awareness and particularly reducing suicide. If you look at these numbers, look at the risk. It's just recently that we, we had uh, um, a particular student, a pupil, uh, uh, who was uh, 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 accused of stealing pencils and committed suicides because of that. Yes. When you look at these numbers, what comes through your mind? One, we have two ways of looking at it. Uh -huh. Is it that now we are getting the number because we are more aware of there's been now the conversation on suicide or was suicide happening before but you are not aware? Okay. But then okay. it also means that, especially during COVID, mm -hmm. the numbers tend to have increased because increased. of yeah because of pressure, societal expectations, mm -hmm. struggles, issues, you know, change, transitions. These people, you know, when things get unpredictable, it means it has an impact on your mental health as well. Yeah. So it means it tends to go on the rise because one again, did we have support systems to ensure that mental health was taken care of, which is a no. So you tend to see that the numbers have been increasing. Then also, again, when you also look at it this way, most of the time now, because we're in the Suicide Awareness Month, suicide is not like a one-time thing. Mm. This is something that has been building up. So once we get the triggers, then you find that's why, you know, we are walking time bombs. So once yeah. you're triggered, then, you know, most people think, what next suicide? Mm -hmm. yeah. What next suicide? And, 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 and that's the first thing that comes in their mind. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at... Um, men and women okay why are we seeing men doing it more than women or what is it that we need to change to have these numbers reduced especially from the side of men because as a man i'm also concerned okay yeah the highest cause of this or whatever contributes high, highly is depression mm -hmm. and you find that depression is very high amongst men yeah. the reason being men uh, the african culture ideally i think world world men are in build to shut down, you know, go silent on the issue and not speak more about it. Where else compared to women, you know, for a woman, if I meet a fellow lady here and say hi, most likely she'll be, how are you doing? And I'll complain, you know, the traffic one, two, three, you know mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. one, two, three. I can meet a fellow lady and start complaining about the kids or whatever has happened. But men are built to be, how is it? I'm trying. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. you find that they're building in a lot. And what happens when you build in a lot? Depression comes in or it start by being, it could be mild, then it turns out chronic. So you find that men tend to be at higher risk. Then also the way the African society has built us is more like, it's a weakness to ask for help as a man especially. It's a weakness to say I can't do it. Then they're also, you know, it's more demanding to be a man than it is to be a woman. Though as much as the roles, you know, a man feels like, as a lady, I can say, you know what, my finances are not okay. Who will mm, I go mm. to, to the man? Okay. But for a man, before you get to the point the, whereby, mm -hmm. you know what, my finances are not okay. I need help. It's a bit hard. And they, don't, they don't have anyone to, to go to. They don't have themselves. Not really, because uh -huh. I believe there are a lot of people who have no idea that men are struggling. Because most of the time, men have a skill masking up or mm -hmm. manning up what they have been taught, quote in quotes. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. find that at times, if you'd ask maybe around anybody who has a man who is depressed or a man struggling with mental health issues, or even the ladies around you could ask, have you have a, ever had a man struggling? And they'd be like, yes. How long did it take you for you to know that? They'd be like, when they were breaking down at the end point. Because mm -hmm. you find most likely men don't come straight forward and say, you know what, I'm struggling. You know, for a lady, she's going to hit her toe and she's going to complain about it the whole yeah, day. Yeah. yeah, but I think maybe it's that men have not learned the skill of communicating and speaking mm -hmm. out. And also I think because it's an ego issue, whereby that's why they hold their issue, their ego. They mm -hmm. need to look mm -hmm. all good, having it all together. All macho. Yeah, you know, you exactly. Have, uh, you must be compact. Y yes. You know, you're the one who should be in charge. Well, we should, let's, talk, let's talk about something different, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. If we are to have this particular discussion, we need to have solutions. Let's talk about how can we approach men? How can we tell our men to, 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 to be open with us? You know, it's okay to cry. It's okay to let go. Is this something that women have a big role to play when it comes to changing the perspective of the men? 
true because you find that i normally challenge men because there's this conversation whereby men most of the time are going to say you know you've empowered the girl child you've left the men behind but then most of the time you ask who is empowering the girl child if yeah. i would ask you uh-huh. uh, who empowers the girl child the whole society everybody no it starts with women women started complaining from china you know the, the women international oh, the women are the ones yeah most so the, the women are empowering the girl child exactly if you find that it's very easy for me to jump even on the streets and see a lady suffering and i'll be like no something's wrong you know i need how can this lady and nothing might disturb a lady the whole day and even call somebody and come in and help but for men you'll just pass by and that's okay But most of the time when was the last time you I don't know you mentored a young boy or you thought you needed to step up for a young gentleman you find that men don't don't do that but then by the end of the day you want to say inequality you know women are the ones who are being given more women are doing this women are doing but it's women who stand in for each other but men don't have that thing. we have men that do that but also you find that even us women are still the same people who are standing up for the boy child mm. and then we still need to convince the gentleman to stand in for the boy child so <laughs> okay. And I'm I'm drawn from the psychological point of view mm-hmm. as a psychologist. Yeah. I'm drawn to this uh narration where um somebody hears a man saying um, I'm stressed. Okay. I'm worried. I don't know what to do. I feel like giving up. They say be a man. Be a man. Yeah. But I am the woman in this house. You be the man. Is that what should be said is that how it should be addressed stress um uh, no because again you find that mental health is another it's like a illness like any other mm-hmm. so if your man comes home and says i'm i'm having a headache most likely it's like can i get you pain killers can you rest if you say i'm having a backache you need to get checked by the doctor mm-hmm. how comes we make it so different when it comes to mental health It's because mm. I think one there's lack of awareness this whole concept I think we started recently understanding I don't know when was when was the first time you had the term suicide How old were you Suicide Yeah I don't know <laughs> I I can't tell I can't tell Mental health know. Mental health I've been hearing that it like forever Okay And initially I was associating it with madness Okay and maybe that's maybe when you in campus or mm-hmm. something way yeah. way above 18 or something Yes yes so yes, you exactly. find that we have not been educated that mental health is an illness like you know the way you can have anything else in your body undergoing it's some and then it's chronic you know mm. you've not been taught like these are sickness like any other so there's no way you say to a sick person grow up man up It doesn't happen yeah, like that. You need yeah. to be empathetic. Mm-hmm, you need mm-hmm. to look for ways to get for help. So for anybody else when you come from the point where you understand this and in less like any other, then it makes you more human. You sit down and say, "How can we step in? How can I help you?" Mm-hmm, so I think mm-hmm. that's the first point. So we need to have discussions so we are asking each other, "How can I step in? Yeah. How can I help you?" Yeah. As a man, it's okay for you to do this and then it will will help the men. Let's talk about the women. Mm-hmm. Um mental health the uh, uh, suicide rates particularly um we are seeing women although the numbers are fewer than men but the, it does mean that i uh, w- you know we it, it's not as important yeah, true. Um, um how can we also help our women in terms of reducing this suicide rate i think again we should input mental health as a gender issue whereby you see when you talk about cancer hiv aids etc we mm. don't specifically say how do we help men with hiv how do we help women with hiv uh-huh, uh-huh. when we look at it generally as a health issue i mm-hmm. think the bigger question is how do we step in for the society but then again because you asked about women how mm-hmm. do you support women mm-hmm. one i think it comes from education awareness because most people don't even understand Like when most people are undergoing a mental health, people don't know how to watch out when I'm being depressed. People don't know how to watch out when I'm being suicidal. I'm looking at it from this angle. Yeah. Uh, Grace. And 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 this is one discussion that I've had severally um where I've seen people ask about the men. Mm-hmm. It's all about men, men, men. And uh, I've I really I, I, unless you you have mm-hmm. I really hear discussion where we are saying that uh, let's talk about it generally. Um all I hear is men mm-hmm. reducing suicide in the men in the men in the men mm-hmm. is 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 that so Yeah most it's the same Isn't thing that yeah whereby also when you look at things that now contribute most of the things that contribute to men being suicidal is gender based violence uh-huh. Yeah so but then again you find that the flip side now of gender based violence people don't talk about men being you know 
mm-hmm. undergoing gender based violence gpv mm-hmm. yes. they talk about women they talk about women yeah, and ex- suicides we talk about men yeah not understanding it's something that happens on both sides so then again when you look at for suicide like, exactly. in women mm-hmm. i think the question will be why what's the common dominator among us the women who have been com- committing suicide most of the time you find it's relationship issues mm-hmm. uh financial issues most of the times mm-hmm. and work stress related issues good yeah good 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 so you, you agree with me uh, yes so right. we have just said the flip side of gender <laughs> the flip side. yeah yeah oh okay okay yeah. now I'm, I'm looking at um uh, uh high school uh, the, the high rates in in terms of uh, uh our children our school going kids yes you see as a society we need to talk about it um but what is the role of our education institutions our education system our learning institutions when it comes to this uh, uh, you know um, suicide prevention and awareness because we had re- we had recently a pupil who committed suicide in school mm-hmm. after being accused of stealing a pencil yeah there's another who committed suicide after failing to acquire a certain grade in class mm-hmm. How can we reduce that? How what what do we need to do for our education sector? Okay, there are schools that have been open to having psychologists in. Mm-hmm. Personally, like we run programs in schools. There are schools that have been open to come teach our kids about the basics of mental health. Yeah. You see, like how you teach the basics about hygiene. There are people who have been open to integrate, be it once a week or something, which starts with awareness. Once these kids are able to learn this is what mental health is, this is how I know when I'm stressed, this is how I know I can reach out to anybody, then it becomes easier for them to be able to recognize. Then when you give the soft skills, the life skills that we need, how do you know failure is not the end of life how do you, how are you able to tackle challenges mm. how do you know if somebody accuses you firstly it doesn't have to impact your identity that's yeah. a them issue not a you issue how mm-hmm. do you stand up for yourself how do you seek for help or how do you you know sit down and have this conversation how do we even teach our kids not to bully each other mm-hmm. you know in terms of if somebody has stolen something how do you report to the right person and say hey this is how and even the conflict resolution methods the basic soft skills that we need as mm-hmm human beings. Mm-hmm. So if those are integrated in schools, then we would bring up a generation where it has less trauma, less mental health issues, because people have the skills. Because if we, these are still the same things that we're struggling with as adults. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and uh, even as you talk about it, I, uh, teachers in schools yes. also need to have an approach towards it. Do you think, do you agree with that? Yes. And, and, and is there a way that our teachers can help uh, our uh, our kids when they're in school because now, for example, in boarding, the parent isn't available. Yeah, true. It is the teacher that's available. How can t- the teachers also pl- play a role in comes in, in in regards to how they interact with students? I think it begins with self awareness. Is the teacher aware of, of mental health? Because mm-hmm. you can't give something that you're not aware of. Yes. So if the teachers were trained to be, you know, to recognize or to monitor these things, when mm-hmm. you once you know, like you know, this is how you know somebody is sick when they start coughing. You know, what, you know the signs and symptoms. If every teacher was equipped in this, then it means that's the basic part whereby they're able to know a student is not okay. This is how it. But schools have peer counselors, schools counselors, mm-hmm. and then they can take that further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, from the psychological perspective, as a psycho- because that's your profession. Yeah. Um, what are some of these scenarios that you've uh, encountered during your your time as you interact with, you know, people uh, that have stood out when it comes to these issues of suicide cases? And just to mention just but a few, and how have uh, you managed to go through them and handle them, and how do we? Uh, you know, um, uh, copy paste that approach uh, to the world where we say, you know what, in cases like this, we need to do this and that. For me, the greatest thing that I've learned over time is mm. life skills is key or skills people need. I think that's something most people have lacked because most of the time, by the time somebody is ending up into society, as I said, when you try and maybe backtrack it, how did it start, what happened, you find most of the three, the three things that I've found that people are lacking or maybe four things mm. is one people lack self-awareness when it comes to their identity well by their identity is attached to a lot of things so once if your identity is attached to your family once your family is gone you're undergoing separation or divorce mm-hmm. that's it mm-hmm. you know you feel like your life purpose is over then something else we've not been able to integrate in our society is self-care we were never taught how do you take you know create your boundaries how do you take care of your mind how do you take care of yourself that's something else i've learned how to you know People lack the skills of how to go by. Mm-hmm. The other thing mm-hmm. will be transition. 
mm. whereby people don't know. Like, for example, when COVID happened, we didn't have an idea. Like, when hard times come, this is how you transit, this is how you move very fast. Mm. Most people were confused and people got into, you know, depression, stressed, etc. Because things were changing very fast. We never got a warning in mm. these things. Yeah, so, another yeah. thing, you know, when people lose their jobs, people don't get warnings. Like, you know, at times you go to your work of, and you're told, in the next one week, we are retreating people, and that's it. When people undergo things like death, there's grieving process. So transition, most of the things, people don't know how to transition from one stage, or we don't have the skills to enable us transition. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I found now leading to suicide is finances and relationships combined. So mm -hmm. you find that most people, or even stress and depression, you find that most people are going to end up depressed because they lack financial management skills. Mm -hmm. So you ask them, it's, you ask them why are you stressed, but when you follow up, it's because I don't have money. Mm -hmm. So even if you take this person through therapy, even if you sit them they're down like for a whole year, if they don't have money, they'll never be okay. Yeah, because yeah. they need, you know, be it entrepreneur it. skills, how do they mm -hmm. get their money or things in order? That's mm -hmm. what they need to learn. When it comes to relationship, if somebody mm -hmm. is not in the right relationship or they don't know how to be in the right relationship, you find even if you sit down, talk to them, and they're still in the abusive place or toxic place, or they don't know how to handle it, then mm -hmm. it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and do you have those cases that you've interacted with? That's what people. we do for a living. Yeah, so uh, you find that people most, those are the common issues. Every time somebody walks in, I was even telling a friend the other day that most of the time you can even like this, there's a season, especially for like from July going downwards. I think it mm -hmm. was mostly relationship issues. Okay. And we were speaking to with a professional and like, okay, I hope today we can get something different. Okay. Yeah, okay. other than, you know, like <laughs> today we get a different, yeah, different channel. Because you sit down and every day the relationship and you're like, okay. You're not becoming a relationship expert yeah <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the day so you end up specializing <laughs> with one thing but you find mm -hmm. that most of the things that's what has been happening now um grace i want us to narrow it down okay let's bring it home okay. to the family to the basic level okay. where we are looking at an interaction between a parent and a child and uh, we are looking at changes because you mentioned yeah. awareness etc um, how should we address suicide rates at the family level from the home where we have people who stay together mm -hmm. every single day? It starts from communication, mm -hmm. which is key, conversations. Mm -hmm. When we're teaching our kids, I'm a parent, no, but virtual of that. When we're mm -hmm. teaching our kids by, uh, whereby we're teaching them hygiene, we take time to teach them this is how you wash your hands, this is how you do one, two, three. Yeah. When we're teaching most of our kids about sex, sexual health, reproductive literacy, we take time to do the whole disclaimer. Of which there's some families that have a problem with that still. Which, that's, that's, that's which, well, which is it? There's, there's importance of that. Or yeah. Either way, uh -huh. when you're teaching your kid, like, you know, strangers danger, how to protect yourself, like yeah, you see, yeah. are we able to start these conversations from the basics? Be it even three years old. How was your day? And the child will say, good. What made it good? Mm -hmm. You know, you're starting that conversation and the child can say, bad. What made it bad? And if they're not able, because we also learn something interesting I've learned for adults. Adults, most adults only know emotions good, bad, okay, fine. And if you ask them <laughs> anything past that, anything they, beyond that, they don't know how to label their emotions. But if we were able to go down for the kids and yeah. teach them how to label their emotions mm -hmm. and teach them why. And it is not small talk. It, isn't, it, 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 it doesn't mean you don't have anything to say. You're just concerned. You're, try, you, you're trying to make them open up to understand themselves better. Yes. And when they're able to do that, if they say I was frustrated, what made you frustrated? A certain kid did one, two, three. Okay, where do you think they did that? Mm -hmm. Which what was your role in it? And they can say nothing. If they say nothing, maybe if you see there was a role they played, you empower them enough to you know have that conversation. And if they feel maybe bullied, their esteem is down. That's the part you start training them how to have a better esteem or mm -hmm. higher esteem, mm -hmm. so that by the next time they are feeling frustrated, they don't they are not struggling. How do I go home and say I was frustrated? But because there's a conversation that started early enough, they know if I'm frustrated or if I'm feeling helpless, I can always call somebody mm -hmm. and they will listen to me because most of these young adults or teenagers that are struggling is because that is not a conversation they've ever had and, and and that's why families need to have discussions at home talk talk about how their day has been mm -hmm. talk about how their mind how they feel mm -hmm. talk about sexual issues talk about uh, you know uh, sanitization you know uh, talk about everything at home yeah true so that 
if your child goes through something in school, they'll be able to come and tell you that, you know, mom and dad, this is what I've been going through. Yes. Because you started it at home. And it's very important because you find that your child will never be bullied. Your child will never be harassed by a police. Because they know even if I make a mistake, home is a safe place. I mm. can go admit at home I made a mistake and there's no shaming, there's no bullying. I won't feel guilty about it because home I have people who are going to sit down and correct me and tell me, you know what? Yes, you made a mistake. This will be the consequences. But how do we learn to do better? Yeah, yeah. Now, now Grace, let me know. For, 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 because families are different. Yeah, true. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes having these discussions isn't as easy as we make it sound on TV. Mm -hmm. Talk to a parent today who is wondering, how can I reach to my child? Because <laughs> some parents have the struggle. I'm trying to reach out to them. I've tried. I've asked him questions. I've tried to, to engage him. But I'm not reaching out because some say ah, he's just an introvert. Yet we are seeing children committing or completing, as some say, suicide. Is it possible for a parent to detect it on time and handle it amicably? And how can they, they do that? Yes, it's possible. One, you need to be to learn your child. Because mm -hmm. anybody who is, most of the time, they're always the signs. They're always the symptoms. You need to be very, you need to be attuned to your child. You need to be attentive to your child. Mm -hmm. You need to pay attention of the small things. And you need to offer that safe space. And this only means that, oh, it doesn't, at times also speak about your rough days at work. You know, to your child. Exactly. It doesn't mean necessarily you're trying to vent them out, but you can speak to them, you know, when you know the boundaries of how you're supposed to represent yourself. At times, our kids don't think we're struggling as adults. Mm. You know, the kids will look up to their parents as perfect human beings. And mm. for them, the greatest issue is, how can I be like my mom? How can I be like my dad? Yeah. They have no idea. Yeah. So they feel like, if I come to you, you won't understand. But yeah. are you able to say, at times work is, but this is how we manage it. And they're able to come back and ask, this is what I'm going through. How can I manage it? If you feel you're not understanding your child, at times you can even walk in for family therapy or counseling or ETC. With the child. With your child. And start that journey together. Because it's never too late. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible for a parent to pick up suicidal tendencies from the child? Yes. From home? Yes. Okay, um, most, most of the time, start, if you learn your child is acting differently, if you learn your child has been stressed, mm -hmm. if you learn your child is having a hard time, undergo, maybe they don't want to go back to school, they mm -hmm. don't want to engage with certain family members. Uh -huh, yes, you see, yes. with the part whereby they say mm -hmm. no and you think, no, you're just being spoiled. In that conversation, if they say no, are you able to sit down and say, why are you saying no? If they say, I don't feel like talking about it to you, can you offer, can I get you a professional? Or can you talk to your aunt? Who are you comfortable speaking with? Because maybe they are now 16 and you've never had that conversation. Mm. So it's not something that is going, you know, stop into yeah, it, it and it they're it going to start opening it up. And mm. they're going to say, you know, when you're seven, this one. But if you offer them, and also it's been mature enough to understand I can't do it. If I can't do it, I'll allow somebody else to do it. So, who are these people that parents should feel free with to allow their child to talk to? Because I'm looking at a scenario where a parent is asking themselves this question. Who is the best person to talk to my child? And they're confused. So they end up doing nothing and they end up wanting to address these issues on their own. So when you can ask your child, mm -hmm. I think you're undergoing something and I'd like you to talk to a trusted person. You can come to me, you can go to a teacher, mm -hmm. or you can go to a professional. Mm -hmm. Once you offer those, oh, then fam family are different. There are people who have good family structures. They have good sisters, brothers. You can go to your aunt or your uncle. Mm -hmm. So you can offer the child and the child can say, okay, yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to speak to a certain aunt. Mm -hmm. And the aunt thereby can decide, you know, you know your family and you know how the level of capacity people are capable of. If not, you can decide, let's go for a professional counselor. It's going to be confidential. Mm -hmm. You can go speak to somebody, and that's it. Do religious leaders also play a role here? Yes, they do. Uh, I know there's this conflict between professionals and religious leaders. Yeah. But then again, you find that, do you know when suicide was very prevalent or very high, when the time COVID, we never went to, for churches or something. Mm -hmm. The only some, some of the people are holding it or they have faith or hope it's because they're able to go to church if uh -huh. you take away their you know religion out of yeah mm -hmm. they don't have anything else to find there's somebody who's struggling and woke up today because they know 
God exists or their higher power exists, mm -hmm. whoever they believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's what's keeping that person going on. Now, some parents get a complaint from a child. Mm -hmm. Say, Dad, I will kill myself. And the parent says, go do it. I'll bury you and we'll move on. What well, do you think about that? So, as again, I say, mental health is an illness. It's, a, yeah. it's not like something they sit down and opt. You know what? I'm going to... It's not a choice. Mm -hmm. By the time it gets there, then also we need to understand suicide is the last result. Yeah. It's normally the last thing that we see or the last way of communication they're trying. It means something has been building up mm -hmm. within them. Mm -hmm. It's been long term and you are not able to pick up. So this is the end part whereby you seen, you know, you just seen at the tip where things have been there down and it's just showing at the tip. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing would be, are you able to one, it's an illness. They didn't choose. Like, they didn't wake up today and decide, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Once you understand you're dealing with a sick person. It's a process. It's a process. Then that becomes easier for you to know. A sick person needs to be in hospital. So do not address your child like that. No. Not even your child. Even your friend. Not even your friend. Anybody. It's an illness. And something yeah. else you need to know, that person is a danger to you in the society. Mm -hmm. What if they decide they're going to suicide bomb themselves? You're also involved if they decide to do it in the house. Mm -hmm. What if they decide they're going to do it with the other kids or whoever? Yeah. If, they, if it's a colleague, what if they decide to do it at work? And everybody's at work. So you, once we understand there's an illness and we need to seek for help and ask for help and mm -hmm. tell mm -hmm. people, you know what? This person needs support. Let, let us give them the right support system. Now, um, I want us to bring this discussion to a close. Okay. Let's go to the workplace. Okay. We've seen people commit suicide because of work how can we help here again having systems in the workplace that allow us to communicate having HRs that are able, you who are empowered enough to notice these things. Having supervisors and managerial positions, people who are able to be empowered. There mm -hmm. are also workplaces, there's one that they, is it the UK just came up with, mm -hmm. whereby they have established systems in the workplace and they train people to do that. And I think it's also been replicated around in, yeah, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. Whereby we empower people in the workplace whereby they're supposed to just learn how are you able to create a non-toxic workplace, a place that is able to have mental health integrated in the workplace. As, as, especially the sea suits Because yeah. they are mostly given so much stress, the sea suits kinds of people. So um, we need to have a department in every institution that talks about uh, that does counseling and, and, and guidance. Yeah, we also need to have whereby, like, you, the workplaces whereby the, you need a mental health report to every year. You have need to have attended maybe six sessions. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. they ensure it's stamped by, by the professional, and every time when you, the, the year starting, maybe it's every January or every July, mm -hmm. you have to take it there. Wow. Yeah. I want us to bring this discussion to a close and I want, I want to give you time to have a final word. Um, what would be your parting shot? And I, I would like you to talk to all Kenyans who are watching you this fine Monday morning, especially the youth. That is your camera, your parting okay. shot as we bring this discussion to a close. Okay, I'll say again as audiences, suicide is an illness or mental health is an illness. Seek, seek help, it's an emergency. If you find somebody who is undergoing, who has suicidal tendencies, suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts, that's an emergency. And it's okay not to be okay. You can always reach out. Wow. Yeah. And how can they get a hold of you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. jitunze underscore ke, Facebook, jitunze. Twitter, mm -hmm. Jitunza Wellness, numbers is plus two five four seven triple one double eight three hundred. Say it one more time. Oh, uh, plus Be two five four mm -hmm. seven triple one double eight three hundred. And of course, on Facebook is at Jitunze. Yeah, Jitunze. Get a hold of her. Let's talk about this. It will help you, okay? Because we need each other, and of course, we love each other. Express love, show love, and mean it. Yeah. True. Love is what makes the world go round. <laughs> exactly it does Grace thanks so much for coming I okay. appreciate it thank you for having me right and of course thank that brings us to the end of this morning conversation right here on matters concerning health remember it has been all about suicide prevention and awareness I hope you've learned something I sure have my name is Ram Aguko it's been a pleasure being with you we're taking a short break right here on Wine in the morning but we'll be back with more in a bit